Hello and welcome to this new tutorial for WaveMaker version 2. Buoyant forces and drifting forces are the biggest feature added in version 2 that took nearly one year of my work. There is a full video explaining how it was made, how it works, so you can watch it and learn how it works. For this tutorial we will use these beautiful chips that my friends from Polysquid gave me a while ago to use them in the examples of my asset, back at the time when WaveMaker didn't even allow floating objects. So we already have this terrain prepared to have a surface on it. So let's create a surface. Right click, 3D object, WaveMaker, and then WaveMaker surface. The default surface, as you know, has nothing on it. You have to attach a descriptor, which is created by right-clicking on the project view and then clicking WaveMaker Descriptor. Select the file and change the resolution to 150. Apply and then select the surface and attach the descriptor to it. Now the surface will emerge, but the size is too small. so. We can change the size by changing the local mesh size inside the, com the component. We can set it to 200. Try to find the most accurate size for it that fits the hole. I think this one fits perfectly. Now let's make the water look better by going to the mesh renderer and changing the default material by another default material which is the water material shiny. It is not a real water shader but it will suffice for this example. As you know I like to use simple shaders for this. So let's see what we can do with these little ships in here. Let's select them the whole three, so we can work on those at the same time. So they need to collide with the surface. So we can create a collider component here. I think the sphere collider fits perfectly for them, so they can turn around and make, make it look like they're floating. So let's make the sphere smaller and put it in the base of the ship. Now, since buoyant forces are forces that will affect unity physics and objects that receive forces should have a rigid body, let's add a rigid body component. Now check that use gravity is on and is kinematic is off and then increase the mass a little bit because one I think is too small. The ships are gonna turn around like this but probably not like this. So we can freeze the rotation of that axis. Now my advice is always to check the resolution of the plane and that it is not bigger than the size of the interactors. So let's go to the scene view and activate the wireframe shaded view. Now this is the size of each cell in the water and I think it fits perfectly for our example and the size of our ships. Now if we click play, what's happening? The first problem is that we haven't set the correct interaction mode. So we select the surface and check the interaction type to occupancy based. This is the type of interaction that we need to set and is the whole new method that was added in version 2. The depth of the volume is way too big. The easiest way to see it right now is to hit play and select the collider. The collider will, will show you how big the box is. So this is the depth at which objects are detected. Let's make it smaller. Also make sure that buoyancy is enabled and drifting is enabled too. Drifting will make objects move around horizontally. So the problem is that we don't have an interactor component added to those colliders. If a collider doesn't have an interactor attached to it, 
it will never interact with the surface. Interactors grab the first collider next to it automatically. Now, if we hit play, not all the ships will float. Only one of them will, even though the settings are correct. When this happens, it is always because the surface hasn't set the correct parameters. Uh, we have the maximum detected interactors here that is mandatory for this kind of CPU demanding processes. So you have to set the minimum you know that will interact with the water. So since we have only three interactors, let's set this to three. The max cells per interactor is the number of cells each collider will occupy in the grid. So just make it the smallest you can, but don't make it too small, otherwise you will see weird behaviors in the ships. The max overlapped interactors is the number of interactors that can be in the same position one over the other. Since the water is very shallow, we won't have any ship over the other, so that's okay, we can set it to one. Nice, so let's see if this works. Well, that's something. Now all of the ships are floating, but the look of the water is not right. And there's another problem. Yes, you can see that the ships never stay floating and they keep turning around. Since the glider is a sphere, there's nothing that stops the turning. So to make this work, we need to make the center of mass to be on the bottom of the ship or maybe lower, but we can't set that in the rigid body because it is not displayed here. You can set it using a script or code, but we can do a little trick here. We can create a collider that is not attached to any interactor, but if we set the correct size and position, we can make the rigid body have the center of mass lower than the ship because the rigid body combines the sizes of all the colliders. If we put them here, the ships will always try to stay afloat because there's part of the mass that is brought down there. As weird as it looks, seems like this little trick will let the ships stay afloat and look right. It looks awesome, so let's now fix the settings in the surface to make the waves look better. You can see that the ships never stop jumping, so this is typically happening when there's no uh, damping on the buoyancy. So that's why I added this little parameter that will allow the, the floating objects to not stay jumping all the time. And let's change the wave simulation properties here. So the propagation speed will change the speed at which the waves move around. For this resolution and size of the surface, a big value will suffice. In order to see the movement of the waves, let's make this ship move. So I have a little script in here. In one of the sample scenes, there's a ship scene that has a script to move the ship. So let's change the parameters to make it move faster and apply it to the main rigid body of the ship. Now with the, with the arrow keys, we can move the ship around and see how the waves look. Waves look okay, but maybe too subtle. Let's make the waves be more detailed. So first I will bring up the propagation speed that, as you can see, looks better right now. Also, there's too much damping, so the waves disappear too early. Now you can see the waves moving further. Let's get out of play mode and select the, the ships and change the rigid body's mass to 15 to make them, make them go deeper in the water. Well, I think I got out of the play mode and I forgot to set the values that we set in during the play mode. 
So let's go to the surface and set the propagation speed to a very high one and the damping to a lower value. So the waves that they generate are bigger because there is more, more volume occupied by the ships. That's why this is called the occupancy mode. Since this mode is not related to velocity like the other type, you have a simulation scale parameter that will make the waves bigger in these situations. The problem with this is that the aliasing of the surface is more visible. As you can see, it generates small waves every time you move around the cells of the water. To fix this, you can use this very useful parameter called wave smoothness. If you set it to a very, very high value, you can avoid the look of those little waves and the mesh. But if you set it to one, it can make the wave look like cream. So set it to a very high value, but not one. Okay, before leaving play mode, let's copy the component. So we copy the properties and then we get out and paste the properties that we changed. That's a good way to keep the values that we set. Let's try something else. Let's increase the resolution of the plane using the descriptor file to 200, for example. And let's see what happens. There will be more waves and the waves will look bigger. So don't forget to bring down the simulation scale parameter. This will allow for more detail waves. But the problem with this is that your scene will be less efficient. So try to keep this resolution as lowest as possible and play with the other parameters like the resolution scale to make it look better. So I think this, together with a pretty good shader or a water material that you have, will probably make it look much better and hide some of the problems that the current version of buoyant forces have, like the aliasing effect, that has been one of the biggest problems uh, during this year. It will be much better in the next versions, but now this is version 1, so I think it's looking pretty good. If you're worried about efficiency, there's something that you definitely have to do with surfaces, which is this fixed cells section in the surface component. Fixed cells can be shown in the scene view by clicking that, or you can open the descriptor file which stores the fixed cells and you can share them between different surfaces under fixed cells you can show them and fix all of them and then enable the paint mode or use the automatic detection if it works it doesn't really work with all cases but for example with terrains it doesn't really work right now but maybe when you are watching this tutorial it's already fixed um, so you can enable the paint mode and set it to unfix and then paint the unfixed cells. So these are ones are the ones that are simulated. The fixed cells are not simulated and absolutely ignored from the system. This can make the surface a little bit more efficient, especially if you're losing a lot of parts of the surface that are not moving. Also, don't forget that you can also select the super sampling mode here under the interaction properties. The super sampling mode does not increase efficiency. In fact, it makes it much worse. I added that to give an option to remove those aliasing effects, but it just makes it smaller. So it doesn't really work for all the cases. How efficient is this scene? Well, buoyant forces are the most expensive feature of WaveMaker right now. For now, it takes around maybe one millisecond, but I will show you how many things are done in the backstage of WaveMaker. You can add a component called WaveMaker Surface Debugger during play mode. And as you can see, you can generate waves to check your settings as well as 
For example, showing other stuff like the rays that are thrown. This is not that much, but these are the rays that are hitting the ships. You can also enable other draw modes. Some of them are very advanced. The gradients that are generated in the water. So as you can see, there's a lot of things that are being done during the simulation. That's the reason why this new method is slower than the previous one, but you have other cool things like the buoyant forces and other stuff. As you can see, there's detection of the occupancy of the vol water volume and it is extremely jobified and multi-threaded. I'm pretty happy with the result and I think this tutorial will teach you a lot of features that are added in version 2. Hope you like it and don't forget to subscribe to the channel to receive more tutorials and updates or follow the official website. From now on, updates will be faster and more frequent than the previous one. So, well, see you in the next video.